I now call to order this regular meeting of the Minnehaha County Planning Commission. And as a courtesy to everyone here tonight, please make sure that all your cell phones are turned off. Please also note that tonight's Planning Commission meeting will be rebroadcast via CityLink and posted on the www.minnehahacounty.org site for viewing by the general public. Any action taken on the rezoning application during the public hearing tonight is a recommendation that will be forwarded to the County Commission for another public hearing on Tuesday, November 27th at or after 9 a.m. Meetings of the County Commission are held in this same room and the decision of the County Commission will be final. First on the agenda is once again the public input. Is there anyone who wishes to speak on any item that is not on the agenda? At this time, we will consider the minutes from the September 24th uh, meeting. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded to approve the minutes of the September 24th meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I will now read item number two. And if there is anyone that wishes to speak on this item, uh, please raise your hand and we will move it to the regular agenda. Item number two is the rezoning. 18-08 to rezone from R1 residential district to the C commercial district. Uh, the property is described as lots 10 through 23, block 5, Lyons Village Edition. Uh, this is located in the unincorporated area of Lyons. The petitioner is Dennis Haddle. There is one. Uh, is a okay, we will move item number two to the regular agenda. Kevin? County Plan or Kevin Hookman, County Planning Department. Uh, as you just read, uh, this is a rezoning item for the, as described. If I can get my mouse to work. So the proposed rezoning. And the applicant is looking to rezone approximately 1.1 acres of a 2.73 acre parcel from R1 residential to C commercial as shown on the map. The red area on the map is the rezoning area and the yellow area is the remaining area of the parcel that uh, stay is residential. Uh, the, the petitioner has submitted a short narrative uh, to describe what he plans on doing at this, this section of the property. Uh, the plan is to include auto sales and service and uh, warehousing and storage on the property. Uh, I will note that the, that the petitioner and the planning commission should be aware that the conditional use permit will be required to use the property as requested even after this property is rezoned. Um, furthermore about the property, uh, the property is located on the north side of Lyons, which is a small unincorporated village uh, in the rural area of the county. Uh, as lo noted earlier, the east side of the property is proposed for rezoning to commercial use. Uh, this is located adjacent to a, another property that is commercially zoned, which is this property with the old gymnasium. Uh, the proposed rezoning property contains the, the former school building uh, for the Lions School uh, and asphalt parking and one supporting garage that's adjacent to the building. Uh, right along the western part of the rezoning area, there is an area of trees uh, that do provide some screening of the building and parking areas in this current condition. The proposed rezoning is, I should, will note that the proposed rezoning is a result of active code enforcement and I'll show you some pictures to show a little bit, explain more of that. Uh, the code enforcement is for a public nuisance on the property. The property is currently being used for storage of vehicles and equipment for future sales at another location. Uh, and I, again, if this property is to be uh, maintained with storage, uh, it'll have to be rezoned and then a conditional use permit must still be approved. 
and that is the time at the conditional use permit hearing to attach any sort of conditions about uh, the property such as fencing screening um, maintenance of the asphalt and, and others uh, the area is considered or Lyons is considered a rural service area in the comprehensive plan uh, and the rezoning proposal generally meets the pro policies and objectives of the comprehensive plan being part of the rural zoning area and adjacent to commercial zone property so I'll just go through the, some of the pictures next here uh, this is looking to the east onto the property the large grassy area that you see there is the area proposed to remain residentially zoned uh, the trees in the background you'll see that that screens the ex the schoolhouse and and the parking lot fairly well from this particular vantage point this is looking uh, south onto the property from the driveway uh, you'll see that there's already vehicles being stored on the property and you can see the garage in the background and the in the schoolhouse in the back as well another view of the, the storage parking area it is an asphalted parking lot that um, you'll see that there are some cracks with some grass and weeds growing out of the cracks there's a little better picture of the storage garage that's existing on the property Um, up the back kind of towards the the school uh, this is the the school has been uh, vandalized uh, many of the the windows have been broken out by rocks and presumably and and um, but the brick itself looks like it's in pretty good shape um, I did I thought I had some pictures of the other side of the building uh, but there is more uh, grassy area to the south of the building um, towards the what's second street in Lyons uh, this is a picture of the road coming into the driveway and one thing that I will note with this photo that was not listed in the staff report is that this particular driveway is only wide enough to contain one vehicle so as of right now this driveway is not adequate for uh, any commercial use as it stands um, uh, the other second street on the south of the property has more uh, space more width uh, to it and is more readily used and yeah there's the second street uh, road the trees to the right are on the are adjacent to the property and this is the existing commercial that's to the east of the site the old gymnasium and then looking down uh, southeast is the storage being used for fire trucks um, I'll go back to the map quick uh, staff does find this uh, to be the meet the policies and objectives of the comprehensive plan and recommends approval of rezoning number 1808 to rezone the subject property from R1 residential district to C commercial district is there any questions I got one for you. yes Adam. Hey, Kevin uh, has anybody looked inside that school I mean what's the shape if you was to use that school building has it has it been looked at or is it I, functional or to use or what's the status of that I have not looked inside of it but uh, I guess from seeing the amount of broken windows uh, it, it, nothing could be warm in it I should say there wouldn't be any way to use it and have it a space that keeps warmth in it any other questions for Kevin is the petitioner here Will you please come forward state your name and address please uh, um, Brad Hatley uh, and I live here in Sioux Falls uh, do you need my street address or yes please uh, 1409 North Jessica any questions for the petitioner if I may yeah. Madam Chair so 
you've had some issues with um, code enforcement on getting the area cleaned up. It still looks a little bad. Well, if you would have seen it when we got the property, it is a night and day difference. Um, when we when we purchased the property, there was enough room for one car to pull in on the asphalt, and all of the windows were broken out. We replaced a lot of the windows. Um, we've been having a, a constant problem uh, with vandalism and theft, and so part of the reason for this rezoning is so I can spend more time there, and I can try to curb the the vandalism and and, and uh, make the property a, a presentable place. Um, the, uh, you know, we, we put a window in, it gets broke out. You know, it is, we've, we've had several things stolen. We've made countless reports of theft and vandalism. Um, and so that's, you know, part of the, that's actually the main reason why I want to do something with this because it's, it's such a nice piece of property and to just sit there idle is is ridiculous you know I, I i would really like to use this this property and and make something of it um, <clears throat> my ultimate goal is is to actually build out there live there work there have have everything in one spot yeah but uh up until this point it, it just hasn't been feasible because last thing i want to do is build something there and then have somebody break in when i'm sleeping <laughs> you know but uh, i feel if i'm if i'm there more um that uh, I can I can maintain the property better. Any other questions? Do you have any plan to have uh, homes built on the residential part of these properties? Aside property? from in the future, if I decide to build there for myself, no. Madam Chair, if I may. Mike. Not to sound like a broken record here, but maybe just to help clarify my mind or re re reinstate something in my mind. Today, all we're really approving is the rezoning. And right. You understand that if you, for the, your comprehensive plan, for lack of a better term, you're still going to come back for this board uh, for that conditional use permit that Kevin referenced. So tonight, we're really just looking at turning that into a commercial parcel, and you're right. understanding that. Yes, yes. Adam, do you have uh, any questions? Yeah, I just was wondering what he's, if we do approve it, is he going to keep the school or is it uh, something? What? How are you going to utilize that school? Are uh, you going to do anything with that, or what was your plan there? I guess it's going to be used for warehousing. Um, we buy overstock, uh, new new items, and I, I would like to have a place to put that stuff to where I can organize it, sell it, whatever. Um, and the building is is perfect for that. Uh, I actually have electricity in the building. Um, I don't have water or sewer in there as of yet. Um, you know that someday you know but right now it would just simply be cold storage okay. any other questions petitioner thank you we may call you back all right uh, is there anyone else that would speak uh, about this item you come forward sir state your name and address Uh, Harold Boer, 4660852 Street, Lyons. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to come uh, tonight. And uh, I've been a businessman in Lyons for uh, uh, over 40 years. And I certainly know the planning and zoning process. I've been here myself several times and rezoning and building permits and all that kind of stuff. And I understand its importance. Um, when we do a building, we follow the guidelines and everything. And when we do a building, we always try to make it attractive and we always keep it very well kept and uh, cleaned up and picked up because uh, for our customers that come in, and we get customers in from many states and foreign countries, the appearance of lions when they come to town is very important. They're, they're buying a very expensive piece of apparatus and they want to make sure that it's, it's done right. So again, the overall impression when they pulled in the lions is very important to us. Uh, my concern with this is given its history and its current appearance, uh, we're concerned that it's not going to get any better and potentially could even get worse. That's our biggest uh, issue. And we don't want Lyons to become a dumping ground for uh, stuff that Sioux Falls and the other areas don't want. Um, I say I totally understand the zoning and everything like that, but certainly there has to be some conditions that it isn't like it is and that would get uh, good and uh, doesn't bring lions down that road to be just a dumping ground. Thank you. 
We have some more pictures if you're interested, but I don't know. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anyone else like to come forward and speak? Either in either proponent or opponent. Come forward, ma'am. State your name and address. My name is Bonnie Glidewell, and I own property um, in Lyons, uh, right along, I believe, Second Street. And I live in Sioux Falls, and my address is 2105 South Elmwood. It's kind of one of those things, if anybody had ever asked me when I was a senior in government class that I would be appearing before you this evening, I probably would have become hysterical. <laughs> so if I'm not quite as composed, that would be the reason why. Um, one of the things that I have a question about is really more in the area of mitigation. And every company and every industry always has in, uh, mitigation areas to worry about. In this instance, what do I, you know, there would be environmental mitigation that needs to be considered. And my question is, in the work that has been done thus far, by the different offices, has that been taken into consideration? One of the things, um, and I don't know the answer entirely to this, but what in the, in the city of Lyons, where does the water come from? Does it come from rural water? Is it private wells? Okay. Do any of the community members have private wells? So there's groundwater issues to consider. Scott, do you know? I, I don't know. Okay. Um, the, there's going to be, um, let's see here. In addition to uh, sales, there is um, auto repair, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so in auto repair, my perception is that there are chemicals and products that are less than environmentally safe sometimes. So has how these products are going to be recycled or disposed of, has that been considered? Well, this has not, so we're, we're as Commissioner Ralston has sort of mm -hmm. indicated, we're, we're now jumping ahead a step. Okay. Because today we're just looking at the rezoning request. Right. And as Commissioner Ralston uh, had indicated, if this should be approved tonight, then he would have to come back for a conditional use permit. Okay. And that's when we would ask him all the questions and the neighbors would be notified again. And that's when he would have to come up with his plans on uh, specifically what would occur on that property and how he would handle waste material. Okay. So at this point in time, there's been no environmental study on the impact of the community? No, we're just looking at land use. Is this appropriate to be rezoned to commercial? Okay, and that, that cuts my questions short by, you know, by many. Um, I do have a question and that is, uh, and maybe that will be answered at a different time, but if there are going to be vehicles and it's such for sale, there are likely, likely going to be many, many lights. So has that? That would be something we would address at the commission. And the, okay. We typically have a condition on there that they have to maintain the light on their own property. So that's one of the conditions we typically require. Okay, okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I think, I, as you very kindly <coughs> pointed out, I may be ahead of the game. <laughs> but thank you for listening to the questions that I did have. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Otherwise, I'm gonna close the floor. I have a question for staff, I guess. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. Uh, are there any uh, eligibilities on this property, or what's the status of a building lot uh, within the uh, unincorporated community there? So uh, this property is already zoned residential, so it doesn't need eligibilities as long as it has adequate land. Uh, they would need one acre of land to have a residence and a septic system. So since it really puts them down to one house okay. currently. So the two yellow uh, parcels there would only allow one one home? Yeah, because there, unless they would use, say, like somewhere near the school to put a house and have a separate drain field, they could maybe squeeze a second house in there, but. 
So maximum two. Yep, if I may. Go ahead, Jeff. So the, the, the nuisance that we declared on this property previously, was it with a different owner? Uh, the the nuisance that we declared more recently in Lyons was in the south part of Lyons. Okay. On a different property. Any other questions for Kevin? So I guess I do have one question. Go ahead, Mike. So again, stepping back to the just we were looking at the commercial use. What if any ramifications are there? Or what is this timeline? If he does, he have to address these nuisance complaints before this conditional use use permit um, would come back before us, I guess. Does that make sense? I mean, so we, we approve this commercial use today. He still has to correct or mitigate the, the nuisance, correct, before his conditional use permit? Um, he would have to mitigate the nuisance. Uh, it, you know, when, when, when the nuisance complaint came to us as a planning department, uh, we look at kind of all the different options of how he can, the landowner can work with uh, us to mitigate the nuisance. Uh, he, this particular landowner has decided that this is going to be his first step, uh, and he's progressing towards, I guess, his goal of mitigating it. Um, uh, if he keeps on progressing with it, we will c continue to work with them for mitigating it such as the next step of conditional use permitting. And we can put conditions on it to say at that point that only, I don't know, uh, cars with tires on it can be in the property, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, and then that would give them direction of how to clean up the property. Uh, if he doesn't come forward with a plan, uh, uh, I guess within a certain, I don't know what time, usually we give them a couple, a uh, month or two to come forward with a plan or to apply for that next permit, uh, then we would go through and, and continue with the nuisance uh, mitigation. I think that's kind of answering what I was getting at, is that we're not just kicking the can down the road here, that we have a, an end goal <laughs> just to address some of the concerns the community does have, that we're not looking two years before he comes before us with a, another mm -hmm. conditional use permit. So. Any other questions? Madam Chair, yeah. I, I guess I have a, a, a fear that this, the property will not see further progress before we, and even if, uh, if we don't approve this, I don't know that, uh, the, I have, a, I guess, a worry that uh, a, uh, like a, a wrecking uh, operation will spontaneously come into existence and and things will only deteriorate. I'd really like to see this property uh, brought up to a higher degree of maintenance before I uh, before I would want to change the zoning on it. That's just my thought. Well, you have a couple oh. options then. If, I mean, if that's the, if you make a motion and it goes that way, you could continue this for a few months and direct him, the applicant, to get the bank to get the property clean some manner and we could then have, have a update in two months and continue the hearing that's one option um, I guess could I ask the applicant to come back up and ask sure. him the Dennis could you come back so my question to you sir is uh, if we were to defer action on this today and give you say until February to uh, uh, bring it into uh, a better condition, uh, would that be acceptable to you? Could you? Ab absolutely, I, I'm Brad, by the way. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, you know, this is kind of a time sensitive thing for me. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I would like to um, actually be able to use the property, maintain it better. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna take over the property okay. at some point. Um, and as far as you're concerned, uh, you know, is the place turning into a wrecking yard or something like that? That's not what I'm looking for. Uh, what I'm looking for is a, a place where I can, where I can have certain things, build certain cars, stuff like that. You know, it's not, uh, it's not going to be a billions or a Frankman or anything like that. We're, we're little people, little guys, just trying to make our way in the world. 
and uh, you know we own the property and so I I just feel as if we should be able to to use it you know and and uh, I um, if this gets approved um, I'll be able to focus more energy on maintaining the property taking care of uh, renovations and whatnot um, if this isn't I may be forced to sell the property um, and if it gets sold then I nothing you know, I will improve um, I have a question also um, I don't want you it isn't you alone that owns that property is that correct you have some partners is it's that correct no, it's my father who owns it oh I see okay yeah and uh, um, he's he's retiring getting out of the business altogether and so I'm, I'm taking over and see, okay. uh, um, rather than having two locations to maintain and uh, pay for I would rather have just one that I can focus all my energy on and make something special out of it um, I believe that the 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 school has got enough history that it should be salvaged um, I don't think that it should be knocked down there's there's a lot of people that come out there and they they want to walk through it and this and that you know to reminisce and uh, but unfortunately the the events that have led up to this has kept me from allowing people to go in there um, because I, I just don't know who's gonna be back when I'm not there <laughs> so um, you know it's the whole reason for this is to to improve the property secure the property and and make sure it exists for for years to come Jeff any further questions so you have another location also we lease a, a, a property out by T and that's where the retail car lot is um, what uh, my and this is getting ahead of myself but uh, my goal is is to convert the retail sales into wholesale sales and so there won't be uh, you know a bright lights or a retail car lot where people are constantly coming and going it's it's gonna be for my personal use you don't happen to have any pictures of the operation on T do you I don't know Becky um, I certainly appreciate everything that you've shared with us I am a little confused though about how the fact that it's not zoned commercial prevents you from cleaning it so to speak time uh, with with having a, a car dealership you know I've got to be there I can't be in two places at once um, and if I'm at the school working out of the school then uh, then that'll afford me more time to maintain the property and and do the renovations that need to be done uh, and then also my hopes are is if I'm there all the time then maybe the windows won't get broke out you know maybe the the theft won't happen anymore you know the, the vandalism and theft has just been ridiculous and uh, you know so I, my hopes are is that I can go out there and I can actually do something with this place and make it a, a nice place thank you any other further questions Doug how, how long have you guys owned this property well it's been 10 years now okay. give or take and what was it like before you guys bought it completely overgrown there wasn't a single window in the front of the building um, there was no electricity out there uh, the bus barn the, the roof was coming caving in um, the all the windows were knocked out of that um, you know I, I spent probably two months out there replacing windows and, and securing the building um, just to have them knock back out again and the problem I believe is is that I just couldn't spend enough time out there you know it's it's I don't know well I, I do know who who was doing some of the theft and vandalism and we couldn't we couldn't get that taken care of <laughs> but uh, um, so you know my hope is, is if I can be out there make the place a nice place that's that's the bottom line otherwise you know we're gonna be forced to sell it and then who knows what's gonna happen to it so okay thank you yep any other for further questions for the petitioner um, if we gave you uh, even one month do you think that you know maybe removing some of the shrubbery getting rid of some of the uh, metal objects that are cluttering it up uh, uh, would that be a feasible thing I would I would love to say yes uh, but the problem is is like I say I 
I can't be at two places at one time. And unfortunately, uh, my dad has, has had health issues, and uh, that's why this is all happening. Um, you know, I, I would like to say yes, I can go out there and, and spend a couple weeks and just get it all cleaned up and, and everything parked nice and neat. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm, you know, I, I, I have to be at the car lot because it is retail and I don't have any employees. And so um, state law says that I have to be there. Hmm. So, you know, it, a month, maybe two months, but, you know, we are going into winter too. And so that's going to put a damper on things also. Well, let me just say that if, if we made this change, you still wouldn't have the time to be there to bring it up to snuff, so to speak. Well, we would because then I would... You'd make the commitment. The, I'd, I'd, I'd close up the car lot in T, convert it to a wholesale lot, and move it out to Lyons is, is the ultimate goal. And so then I would be out there all the time. Mm. Any other questions? Madam Chair. Jeff, <laughs> I can see. So let me just say that, you know, my thought is either A, we give you some more time, or else B, we turn you down. That's my, my view. So what would you like for time? I, How about if we gave you, like I said, till... Uh, I, you know, I, I'll have to interrupt for a second because I'm, I'm a little unclear as to um, what the nuisance is. I, I guess I'm not, I haven't read the paperwork myself. Um, and so, you know, I, sure. uh, you know, if it's, if, if it's renovations on the building or anything like that, then, you know, I, I, chances are I'm not going to get that done this winter. Um, but as far as, you know, cleaning up the, the, the parking lot where, where everything's concentrated, um, you know, if I had a couple months, I could, I could get that squared away. Um, you know, and, and actually it would take me less, but I would like to have more so I you know the thing is also though if we turn you down then it has to be like six months right Scott before you can come back so sure. um, my my thought is that if we brought it back in in a couple months we would have time to see some progress and uh, and uh, I don't know what do you guys think any other comments from the Commission I think that's reasonable just give them a couple months and get the, all the what's in the I think in the parking lot cleaned up there. And well, we, we have worked extensively with his father with, through the code enforcement issues. So his dad is well informed on what the issues are out there. So okay. he knows. Yeah. So um, if I might ask Scott, Scott, if we were to defer, should it be till January or February? Because it is tough working in the winter. Right. So it's either, you know, one month or, or January. And, you know, January is anyone's guess what's going to happen. I mean, that's right. It's typically, we, do, we have a real low success rate of getting people to clean up their properties in the months of <laughs> December, January, February, March, because it's all frozen, snowed in. And Well, whether we approve it or not, that's going to be winter coming up here, and so it's chances are it can't be cleaned up too quickly. And whether it's zoned commercial or it's zoned ag or whatever it is, what what's located on the property is still going to be a nuisance, whether it's zoned commercial or not. So in its current state, whether it would be zoned either one of them, we would still have the ability to go in and eventually declare it a nuisance and clean it up, which we, you know, don't like to do. Nope. Okay, any other questions for the petitioner? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, where are we? <laughs> any other comments? You know, it would be great to see progress made, even if it wasn't completely... Uh, brought up to uh, looking like a billions car lot or something. Um, 
And with any luck, some of the more superficial problems could be quickly uh, taken care of. You know, the size of the driveway or anything like that could be worked on too. Um, I know uh, you farm guys uh, work outside and gals work outside and uh, in all weather, uh, what's reasonable? I think it would take some hard work now before we have snow. I mean, what's going to be done probably really needs to be done in the next six weeks. Yeah. More or less, be yeah. Every before everything is snowed and iced in. Mm -hmm. Once it's frozen in, I mean, to go out there with chisels and picks is just not. I guess how many vehicles are out there, I guess. Yeah, is how many true. does he have to, how many is there that need to be removed? All right, so a few of the photos from here. Um, so there's the vehicles, there's tires, um, and this area here, there's a large pile of, of like wooden debris. Um, I'll make a motion to continue this till February. Uh, motion is made and seconded to continue the rezoning till February. Are we going to make sure? Are we going to see progress then, or are we just? That's gonna, what we hope. That's what we want to see then, and then we'll rebuild on it then in February. Yeah. Then? Okay. And and the neighbors will be notified again as well, right? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that's what we're voting on. So. Okay. Are we all sitting at this table clear on this? Or any further discussion before we vote? Okay, all those in favor of deferring it till February? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Madam Chairman, a bookkeeping issue. Um, there was never a motion. We, 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 we talked about the consent calendar, but there was never a motion to approve the minutes from September 24. I make a motion to approve the minutes from September 24. I'll second. We did. I thought we did. I thought we did. We said yeah, it we at did. the same time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, I was going to say, these two said it at the same time. She said it at the same time. Uh, yeah. Well, we did it twice, so. It's the only reason I remember. Are you all in favor of the minutes then? Please give her a vote. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, we did. Do we have any old business? <laughs> any new business? Uh, Madam Chair, I guess uh, yeah. I'd like to talk about the situation down there in the Brower subdivision. Is that possible? I'd like to show this picture I have of... Well, basically, uh, you know, this party went into operation. Uh, uh, I've got two pictures here. Went into operation without any permit, and we found out after a couple of months. And uh, then he came in for a permit, did not get it, and he's continued to operate now for 11 or 12 months. Zoom in on that if you can. It has been turned over to the state's attorney for legal action. And this is a, a fire at that at that junkyard. Again, this person has no permit for this operation and has been told that and continues to unload vehicles and trucks. And, uh, he called the DENR about it and they said he's doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> there Friday and saw them unloading more cars and um, it's making me crabby. <laughs> <laughs> there so Jeff, what do you want to have, have happen? I Shut him down? Stop, oh, okay. Anyway, this is another picture, oh sorry, another picture at the same place. Look at that mud. So with the fire, the fire department went out there, but they decided that uh, 
I'll see what you are. Meanwhile, the next lot over is like porta potties, and the one after that is bulk oil storage. Okay, anything else you have, Jeff? Is that it? I'd like us to be able to find people that don't follow the rules. <laughs> anything else? Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes.